Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. Today I'm continuing work on my Doll's House attic and I'm going to be making a little something to go in there. Now today I am going to be using some of my um, food packaging board. This is a bit of a cereal box um, to make a tea chest. Now a tea chest sometimes called a tea crate is a wooden box that was used more so in the past for bringing tea across the world and grocers would get the tea by the chest and then they divide it up into um, smaller amounts to be sold by weight but these are quite often um, still hanging around in older houses up in attics and down in basements because they were often repurposed once they were done with for the tea for carrying other items and I think that's the perfect addition for my attic which I do want to have a feel of there's some stuff up there that's been there a long time and then other things that have been moved more recently so that's what we're going to do my first step has been to cut the board to size. Now the base of my um, chest is going to be an inch and a half square. So I've got two pieces that are an inch and a half. Because this board isn't the thickest, I like to at least double it up when I'm making something that needs to have a bit more structure. So for every side, there's gonna be two pieces. I've then got four pieces that are an inch and a half by two inches. That is two of my sides. And then I've got four pieces that are two inches by a bit over an inch and a half. Because I am going to be fitting these sides around the outside of the bottom, I need to equate for that on the other two, though for this side's thickness on the other two sides. Now I find that for me, rather than trying to work out the exact maths and cut it exactly, I cut it a bit bigger and then I trim it. This doesn't matter because as you'll see if it's perfectly straight or not because of how I'm doing my corners, but you can be a bit more exact with your maths if you like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some glue and I'm going to glue each of these pieces, um, well, pairs of pieces, I'm gonna glue them together. Um, what I do is I've got my non-stick baking sheet and I will glue them on here, fold it over and um, stick a bit of weight over the top so that I know that it is all um, well secured. You can use any glue you like for this. I like using my um, Cosmic Shimmer acrylic glue. It's just what I got used to when I was doing paper crafting because it's what everybody was using. But you know, whatever glue suits you. You just need it to be a glue that you know will hold and will stay holding. Our glue, not so good because it's too bulky. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some glue on these and then I'm going to stick them together and wait it down for a while so that I know that everything is nicely secured. So now that my material is stuck together, I haven't left it to dry as long as I would do normally, I must admit, because I want to get on with this. I'd normally leave it a good, um, two to three hours to make sure it was well and truly set, but it's stuck. I'm going to start um, putting this together and I'm going to start with my base piece. That is the inch and a half square piece. And one of the pieces that is um, an inch and a half by two inches. Now I've got my glue on a little piece of cardboard here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue along one of the edges. Doesn't matter which edge you go for because it's the first one. 
and all I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up with the corners with the bottom and just check with my finger that it is nicely um, lined up now obviously you want this piece to be um, at right angles so I'm getting out the um, bricks again now I've recommended these this before that is that you use building bricks branded generic it doesn't matter these are actually a mix and you make yourself a nice corner that you can then use this as a jig to um, let it dry in the right position now you don't have to do this and you can get um, proper magnetic pieces that you can do this with but we've got lots of these bricks in our house and so I do this and I just alter it round a bit to size when I'm doing different pieces and certainly with my first piece I find it really really useful to be able to do this. Once the glue holding the first two pieces together has started to um, set, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue along these upward edges. Now, until you start adding more than um, one side, you will find that it's still a little bit um, wobbly. That was the word I was looking for. It's a little bit wobbly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of my um, slightly bigger pieces and I'm now going to line this up with the corner and the edge there. Now my little jig at the bottom here is holding everything in place, especially if I hold it in the right position. And I've got a bit that, if I turn this over, where you can possibly see, I've got a bit that overhangs. So I'm going to leave this to dry again, and then I will repeat with the next um, exact sized one. Um, but again, I need to let this dry just a little while and then I need to clean the glue where it'll be visible um, for no other reason than aesthetics. Having lumpy glue doesn't look great, especially if, as I'm going to do here, you're going to paint it. So let's um, go for some drying time. I have repositioned my bricks and I'm going to do the... Um, next piece which is going to be this piece and what I'm going to do is I am going to apply glue along the short edge that is facing up like so and then I'm going to apply glue along one of the longer edges of this This is just going to then slide into place, sort of. So I will position this one on here and up against there. And I will have to give it a bit more support because it's not actually sitting on anything there. Now, looking at this, I may be able to get away without trimming if I can that is awesome but if I have to trim I have to trim um, again as I said earlier if you work out the maths exactly you know you work it out in millimeters exactly that's fine you can do it I just don't feel like I've got the time for that some days and this is one of those days so I'm going to take this out, even though it's not actually set, because I want to clean the glue from inside. I'm just wipe my um, extra cocktail stick along there just to take out any big blobs of glue. 
and um, as you can see I've got three sides and a bottom for my um, tea chest. Again I'm going to give this a little drying time, clean my hands up and then we'll stick the last piece on and I'll have a look and you know I think I can get away without trimming that one maybe, maybe just a little bit. I'll have a look at that as well while the camera's off. Now I have been back and I've just trimmed a little bit off that one side, not much and at the moment it looks a bit of a mess. That doesn't matter. I will get to that at um, a future point. We've got a little while to go before we get to that bit. Now what I'm going to do to stick this last piece on is I'm going to go around all of my top facing edges because I've put this open side facing up to um, spread a little bit of glue. I'm actually spreading quite a bit of glue because um, this is, you know, what's going to keep it together. And as I say, when I put it on and I get extra, I can take extra off. It is really difficult to put additional glue in if you've got something that doesn't quite um, seat properly in the first place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to look and see if there's a better looking side because you always get um, better. That's a little bit looser than that one. So I'll put that one on the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that onto here. Now, I've just cleaned my hands up, but I'm going to get them covered in glue again. And this one has definitely got an overlap. And I'm going to take the glue from that overlap because extra glue there will make my life harder when I come to um, paint it and trim it. Although I must say that my acrylic paint does cover the um, acrylic glue um, quite well. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to um, leave this to dry again and then we're going to trim this side which does need a side. Now to trim it, I'll move my bricks out of the way, all I'm going to use is a craft knife. It's not a very um, tidy procedure because you're trying to cut along there um, but it does and you'll understand when this is finished why I'm not concerned about getting perfectly square corners. I think a lot of the boxes haven't got perfectly square corners anyway but um, you know, we do what we can with the materials we've got. What I will be doing next before I paint anything is I'm going to put some glue around the top of the piece here just to seal the joints between the two pieces. I've gone for the ones that are really well stuck anyway, the sides is really well stuck. Um, but I want um, just to make sure that it's not going to come apart. So I'm just going to get some glue on my cocktail stick and run that round and then I'll let that dry and then we'll come back to do some painting. Now this has dried and been trimmed off and I'm quite happy with how it's looking. Next step is paint. Now Tea chests are generally a sort of light yellowish brown. I have not got a paint in the right colour and because I've made, it's going to be, this is actually the second one I'm making, I made one as a will this work, um, I'm reluctant to mix up paint because you either have far too much or not enough. So what I'm using instead is I'm using um, a tan coloured acrylic paint and I'm going to age the crates later on using a brown wash which will take the edge off the paint and make it look um, more appropriate for the attic. 
But this is what I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to paint the entire outside and I'm going to paint about a third of the way into the inside. This is just because I'm going to fill it up with stuff. There's going to be stuff sticking out of it when it eventually goes into the attic. But just in case any is vis anything's visible, it's going to be the top. So I'm just going to do then the top on the inside. So I'm going to start with the bottom and um, I'm not going to bore you with watching me paint, but I'll come back once it's had its two coats of paint. Now that the paint is dry, I've got a tea chest that is reasonable looking. Now, the original tea chests, when I was looking at um, pictures for inspiration, reference, I've got um, metal edges. There is metal that goes over all the corners to reinforce the box. So I've decided I'm going to use my metal tape um, to replicate that look. Now this tape that I'm using, I don't know what it is, I don't know where it came from. It was something that, as I've mentioned in a previous video, my husband came home with and said, can you use this? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure I can find a use for it somewhere along the line. And instances like this are where I find a use for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pieces of this tape, which I've cut down, got it ready, um, on the corners around the bottom. Now, for the corners and the bottom, I'm using a piece that I've cut at a quarter of an inch because I figure that then, as long as I put it on neatly, I can get about, um, yeah, an eighth of an inch showing on each side. I've also cut a piece to an eighth of an inch to go at the top, just to go around the top lip sort of thing, but not to over um, overlap inside the chest. Now this is self-adhesive and I find that using a blade is the easiest way to prise it off the back and I am literally just going to do this. I am going to line it up at the bottom, more or less. It doesn't have to be exact because there is another piece going at the bottom. What? Did, um, make sure I get it straight because that wasn't very straight. And then I'm going to trim it off at the top using my scissors. I'll put that piece aside. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub it down so I get my nice neat corners. Now I'm going to go and um, repeat this process on the other three corners and then around the bottom and obviously around the top. There's not really anything more to it than that but it does give you a nice um, metallic look to the um, edges of the chest. I've applied the tape to the corners and to the top and I'm just applying that to the bottom and I just wanted to show you this because um, the easiest way is to actually apply it as one piece and to overlap it on what will be the back of your chest but obviously you still need to do this and the tip just is to put it all on in one piece and then just go around with your scissors and make a little tiny snip into the corner and then you can just fold over the pieces like so and get a nice neat edge. It's the easiest way that I found. So now that I've got this done, um, I've basically got my tea chest. Now if you haven't got the metal tape, don't worry, you can do it with just some thin card. All you need to do is cut some strips of card, 
Um, I recommend painting it before you put it on there because it'll be easier and maybe even um, you know if you want a shiny look consider adding a bit of Mod Podge to it once it's in place it's a bit awkward but you know it's a line around the edge you can do that um, but you can replicate it with paper or, or thin card um, and then we have my basic tea chest. The final sort of detail that you can add to the tea chest is some um, wording. Now I am going to go with the basic which I've seen on a lot which is something that um, says where the tea came from. Um, you can have some of them would say product of Salon you need to get the wording right because these are older and so obviously there's names of countries that have no longer exist. But I'm just going to go with the most sort of common, certainly here in the UK. And this is, I'm going to put on it, Indian tea. So, now I'm using a Posca paint pen in, um, obviously in black. You can use just a permanent marker. I happen to like these and I've got them so I might as well use them. I'm using quite a thick one. I do have a thinner one here but I found that it was actually um, a bit too thin. And this is um, a bullet shaped nib as opposed to this one which is a pin type. Um, it's just what you like. Now if I bring in the other one that I already did which is a bit bigger you can see I should have done that a bit lower down or I need to put some numbers or something on there because a lot of them have numbers that obviously meant something and then on this one I've written it pays to buy good tea. Now this is a um, saying, phrase, that's on a lot of these tea chests. Now I'm not sure that I'm going to put that on there. I do have an idea of something I'd like to write on there but it is actually something that is um, kind of personal to my husband's family um, and I'm not sure if I'm actually going to do that and include it on screen um, because I need to explain it and I don't feel like explaining it at the moment but you can put pretty much anything you can put um, obviously the writing now this would have been stenciled on if you want to you can print out a stenciled font transfer it and then go over it in the paint I commend you if you want to do that. I can't be bothered. I've got the paint pens. I'm going to just write it on. And it looks reasonable. What you can also do is you can go over with either a thinner paint pen or a thinner marker and then you can write something um, that suggests where the contents of the tea chest might have ended up. So for instance I saw one that had got all the stenciling on and then it had got kitchen scrawled across it because obviously at some point it had been used when people moved house. I may add that in the future. I'm not 100% sure yet but um, that is a possibility. So the next stage is going to actually be to um, dirty these up a bit. So I'm going to get my mat back and um, prefer to get a bit messy. To distress my tea chests what I've got is I've got some brown acrylic paint and this is um, mocha and then I've got some water and all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of the paint to the water or vice versa and I want it to be very, very 
um, runny. Now I'm going to do this on the original one that I did because this has had a good number of days to actually um, dry out and all I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by going over the um, metal bits. Now I know that the paint is not going to take on the metal bits because it's quite um, thick but then I'm going to dab some around the edges and what I might actually do is get a small amount of kitchen towel, scrunch it up and um, start dabbing a bit. Mm. This looks a bit rusty, that's not quite the look I was going for. Okay, we are going to have a look and I will try adding a little bit of burnt umber which is a darker brown. I didn't want it to be too dark but we will see if we can't make it look a little bit and I'll put some of that onto here and then again a bit of kitchen paper sort of Oh yes, that's a bit better. That's a bit more like it. It doesn't look quite so rusty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my It Pays to Buy Good Tea side and basically dab a lot of it off just so that it looks a bit worn. You know, you could possibly do it with a sponge, but hopefully you can see, if I compare that to the plain, actually, if I compare it to the new Indian tea one, you can see it's a bit dulled down. So I'm going to carry on doing this and build up a bit of wear and dirt onto my um, tea chests. Now, what I found was that the watered down paint wasn't sticking very well to my um, tape so being resourceful I went and I got an alcohol marker now I went with in the end um, warm grey 5 and this is actually a very brown grey as you can see off the um, barrel and all that I've done is I've gone over the tape with this not particularly um, evenly. I've sort of pulled it a bit thicker in places, a bit thinner in others, you know, missed bits out. So it sort of looks like the metal bits are dirtied up as well. I've also put a little bit of grime just inside the top of the boxes and I think for a first layer of distress this will do me. I don't know if I need them to be any more distressed once they're actually in the house but I do have the option of adding more obviously if I wanted to take it away it means I've got to do a complete repaint and clean up and it's far more work so I just tend to put a little bit of grime and dirt and age on things and then um, reassess it when I put my rooms together and here we have my finished tea chests um, the first one I did, I did at um, two and a half inches high rather than two and that half an inch I think makes quite a difference. This one actually looks more to scale with Grandmama um, but I'm going to use both of them because I figure there would have been maybe some variation in the size of them. I don't know, there are in my world. That's how I'm looking at it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please like comment and subscribe and maybe even ring that notification bell if you want to know when I upload something and until next